Alright guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about some pretty awesome games coming up that you may definitely have forgot or in development as we speak and they're all going very well. We just don't hear about them yet and I'm here to remind you before they go viral. Let's get right into it with the first game, Dead Island 2. Now, almost everyone can remember its awesome California themed trailer when it released almost 6 years ago. Like always, the Dead Island games deliver well developed advertisements, and it seems it hasn't been for nothing since it's still being worked on, and the development is going really great. Even though the developers are forced to work from home because of that thing happening right now, Dambuster Studios is actively working on the next Dead Island game, according to a recent tweet on their official account. Since Dead Island 2 still has yet to release any new gameplay, trailers and such, hopefully we'll see something concrete about it soon, but we know it is one of the most important games from Capcom at the moment. Considering Dead Island 2 has been in development for years now and gone through multiple studios to develop it because of communication problems, it's good to know that Dem Buster is here to stay and are working remotely from home. Dem Buster is known for making Home From The Revolution, which received mixed reviews at launch, but do not forget this game had a really troubled development, which caused an unplanned early release. Dead Island 2, taking place in a beautiful open California, will have up to 8 players co-op and features kick-ass zombie slaying, as said. I really cannot wait to see how it looks. Next up we have 83, the Cold War Gone Hot FPS military game with 80 plus online players. Long time no see for this one too. It's one and only trailer released a year ago, but the developers are actively working on it from home too at the moment and they're also releasing some dev diaries explaining how everything is going and so on. Keep in mind 83 is coming from the Rising Storm creators, so you know this will be good. The game pits two large platoons of players against each other in massive maps, fighting over a number of objectives that have a tangible impact on the battle as a whole, when held by the victorious faction. Each player will have access to a selection of real-world infantry weapons and equipment, as well as a selection of powerful land and air vehicles, which can decisively turn the tide of a battle in these dark and snowy environments. All the weapons will be truly authentic and will work as players expect them to be. Big fan of Rising Storm so I cannot wait to see more of this. Next up we have Witchfire. Witchfire is a first person dark gothic shooter and you may have not heard of it. You may have not caught its brief reveal at E3 almost 3 years ago. First off, no this game won't be a looter shooter as people expect from the gameplay on screen. This is just a test the devs wanted to make. In Witchfire, the player will inhabit the shoes of a badass revolver wielding witch hunter. In this world, an evil witch influence has stretched across the land, awakening an army of the dead and all sorts of other monstrosities. The storytelling will be pretty similar to From Software games, where each part of the world will tell snippets of the game's story one by one. There won't be no cutscenes at all. Like the developers said, a well-designed world could tell its story in silence. Now for the combat. In a nutshell, combine Painkiller with Shadow Warrior and you're about there. Witchfire's combat is going to be very jumpy and dodgy in a sense. It's heavily focused on smart player movement while taking care of crowd control situations. It's gonna have plenty of different enemies, boss fights and lore, and I want to know more. Next up we have Back 4 Blood, the long awaited spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead 2 and is also made by the original creators. Ever since Left 4 Dead 2 was released back in 29, fans of the co-op zombie genre have been hoping for more, and happily the studio behind it have finally answered our prayers with the announcement of a spiritual successor to the series. We don't know so much about it yet, but here are all the details. It'll be an extremely ambitious premium AAA title that will utilize everything the studio has learned from developing previous games such as Left 4 Dead and Evolve. Back 4 Blood is already playable as we speak, it's coming to PS4, Xbox One and PC, it will still use shooting up a lot of zombies, but it also promises to build on that with lots of new features that will set the new IP apart. They're gonna add a lot of uniqueness to it. It will have a campaign and a PvP mode. I cannot wait for the reveal. Next up we have the ambitious Crimson Desert. The game's trailer took the gaming community by storm with an absolutely stunning reveal trailer as you're seeing here. 
Crimson Desert offers an immersive single-player campaign, teeming with engaging quests based on the exploits of many mercenaries you'll find available for hire. There will also be a vast amount of content based around a more traditional MMORPG format, so it will be a perfect fit for the lone wolf person or those who likes to play with tons of other players. This is a world of mythical creatures who are neither friend nor foe, cruel mercenaries vying for blood and powerful figures conspiring in the shadows of the royal court. Players will never be able to let their guard down. To survive these bigger threats, they'll need to learn to make strategic choices, all brought to life through Pearl's Abyss unique action-driven combat system. That being the case, the biggest friend or foe, as in any MMORPG, will be the player right beside you if you decide to play online. Really promising stuff and I cannot wait to see gameplay. Next up we have Ghost Runner. In this game you'll enter an intense cyberpunk world and experience fierce dynamic combat. Conquer your enemies in the physical world and in cyberspace. Hunt for answers in humanity's last remaining shelter, which is a great tower city torn by violence, poverty and chaos. The game takes place in the future after a global cataclysm where the remains of humanity live in a tower built by the architect, who died mysteriously years ago. Everyone knows the truth, no one says it aloud, but your character is here to change that. It looks really good. Prisoner termination protocol initiated. Next up we have Atomic Heart. After having a pretty troubled development through the whole year of 2019 and having to change many gameplay elements due to game breaking bugs, the Soviet Union FPS is back on track but doesn't have a release date as of yet and is coming to PS4, Xbox One and PC. It is an adventure first person shooter, events of which unfold in an alternate universe during the high noon of the Soviet Union. The main character of the game is a special agent who was sent to a highly secret object by the Soviet government after it went radio silent. It incorporates weird elements inspired by Bioshock and other unique games like it. There's nothing more we know about the game as of now, but it does look really promising from all the gameplay and trailers we've seen. I'll definitely talk about it more in the future. Next up we have Dead Matter. This one has been in development for about 3 or 4 years and to see how it has evolved over the years is a sight to behold. It is made by an indie company after a successful Kickstarter and is a true sandbox survival horror. Players will fight to survive in a zombie pack post-apocalyptic world that foster whichever playstyle fits you best. Settle down and defend your home from outside threats with an expensive crafting and barricading system, cultivate and live off the land, or branch out, explore and scavenge whatever vehicles, weapons and food you may find in a zombie plague Alberta, alone or with your friends. The world of Dead Matter is filled with every manner of weapon you could think of, and the developers have built them from the ground up to support all kinds of personalization. Whether you want to wrap your baseball bat in a barbed wire and go out bashing, rig an alarm clock with C4 to go off with a bang, or strap up your gun with a makeshift kitchen knife bayonet, the choice is yours. And same goes for the vehicles. Vehicles which you can also live in. Cannot wait for more. Next up we have Project Awakening, an action role playing game featuring photorealistic graphics coming to PS5 and a rumored PC release. The footage from developer side games features not only some stunning graphics, but Dark Souls like combat in a Monster Hunter style scenario. Here's all the details we have so far of this ambitious project. It is an open world game that allows you to play with your friends and fight together. The team is trying to balance story and gameplay so that there is an even split between them. Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones were inspirations for Project Awakening. The game has a large scope that goes beyond just a big world. Side Games wants a lot of things for you to do in that world. Visiting dungeons and new areas is seamless, you do not load into them. The game features different classes, outfits, gear, items. 
there will, there will also be different kind of skills in the game, all of them which will be realistic and not Monster Hunter style. It will feature co-op with up to 12 players at once, one of my most anticipated game of the PS5, definitely. Finally, we have Deathloop, by the creators of Dishonored. It is a first-person game taking place in the mysterious Black Reef during a time of madness. The area is caught in an unending cycle and the two assassins, who have different motivations, keep killing each other over and over again. The trailer introduced us to the two main characters, Juliana and Colt, and both are online players. This game is a story-driven campaign PvP game. How interesting is that? Throughout the story of Deathloop, you'll have to fight against another player while trying to finish the story. Juliana wants to protect the cycle, while Colt hopes to break it, and the only way to do that is by killing each and the two over and over again. Nothing more is said, but it certainly looks interesting and I want to see gameplay ASAP. Alright guys, if you have liked this compilation video and would like to see more in the future, make sure you drop a like as always and subscribe or dislike if not. Thanks to Jigglyboy for being a master member on the channel. You can become a survivor member for 99 cents only. It will support me and the channel as a whole. Thanks for watching.